Hello and welcome once again to the ALEC 50th Annual Meeting in Orlando, Florida. With me this morning is Ms. Misha Maynard. Yes. Maynard? Maynard. 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 Sort of got it right. Okay. I'm glad Come, to be here. Coming to us from the great state of Georgia. Absolutely. And you're newly elected as well, aren't you? I've been elected for three years. Three years. Oh, not that new. Then, then you got elected right as the pandemic was hitting. Yes, that was different to campaign in the middle of COVID. So your camp, I was thinking that you were actually taking office in the middle of COVID, but you actually had to campaign in the middle of COVID. Yes. So the election was November 2020 and it was COVID. And so you would knock on doors, run to the street and say, hi. It's like you're doing prank videos. (laughs) It was different. (laughs) And I assume that that changed uh, when you ran again. Or did you have to run again? I'm sorry. I'm I off did. on my Georgia Alexa cycles. I did. So my position, I'm state representative mm-hmm. um, for Georgia, District 56, and our elections are every two Every years. two years. So I just won one, and I will run again next year. <laughs> See, I was thinking about that whole thing that, you know, what a great way to campaign. You're just, like, bothering people on Zoom. You're just randomly calling folks. Like, no, you actually did go out and knock on the doors. Oh, I, absolutely. I love canvassing. That's fantastic. How did you develop a love for canvassing? I love people. Ah, well, makes it nice and easy. Get to know the new folks here and there. Yes. But as of late, down there in Georgia, there was, I believe, was the education issue popped up? Yes. And some news developed around that. So you're absolutely right. And my freshman year as a legislator, we did the special needs handicap bill mm-hmm. that passed. This past year, we tried to do expand school choice. Some people call it vouchers. I like to call it parent choice. And we missed it by a few votes. Okay. Um, I was the only Democrat at the time to vote for that. But since then, um, education is so important to me as well as some other priorities like public safety and just putting people above systems and a host of other things, I decided to actually just switch parties because the policy initiatives that they're working on on the Republican side are more in tune to the needs of my community. Yeah, it's interesting. I've had the conversation with friends and family for you talk about you know, what your views are on this, that, and the other. I'm like, well, you, I can't be defined necessarily by a party because I agree with some of this stuff and I Correct. disagree with some of that stuff, but more on this side than that side. And it was amazing as people told me that there's a huge process when it comes to making that change to switch from one party to the other. Like there's forms you're filling out, there's hearings and meetings or something? I mean, what is what is it, this whole process? It actually is much easier than people think. I probably made it more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I think you, literally, you just sign a form that says you swear to the principles of the Republican Party. Okay. I did not sign that for the Democrat Party. Um, but The reason I said I probably did more, I went to the Georgia State GOP Mm -hmm. to ask, how do you switch? And there were several conversations because I don't know anything about the Republican Party. (laughs) So, you know, but here I am. And it was much easier. Everyone later was telling me, you don't have to do all that. (laughs) Oh, it's like, oh, well. You just sign this one piece of paper (laughs) well now you can be the beacon of example you can be the the mentor that all the others come to it's like how do i do it it looks over oh no it's much easier than that absolutely so if you are a member of the democrat party and i know alec is nonpartisan, so i'm only speaking for myself but if someone is a member of the democrat party and you feel like the principles that are um that that party is aligned with, you do not have to stay with that party. And you're right. No party is perfect, but you must decide what's most important to you. Or for that matter, you can still stay in the party, just vote for the legislation. Because the big push, or whether it be the big push or the final straw for you, was the education bill. It was probably 20 different things. It was 20 different things. So the education bill was just part of it. That was the last bill. The last bill. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was the last. The final straw. It was the final straw. Yes. (laughs) And you're saying that that did not pass? That didn't uh, get enough votes to go through? It did not pass. Um, There were 
not enough Republican members to vote for it. I was the only Democrat. Mm -hmm. So we will try again next year. It is um, very important to me. In my district, some of the schools, 97% of the kids cannot read. Wow. Um, 98% are not meeting math proficiency levels. So if only 2% of children can perform simple math, right. I think that's unfair to say that this is your only opportunity. I was speaking with a family member before about the stock market, investing, getting ready for retirement. And I told him, well, you know, you're lucky that I have the experience and I can guide you because I spent the first six months of investing, losing most of the money that I invested because I was just following the same program until finally I said, what am I doing? All I'm doing is losing money. I got to stop, rethink this and go away. But if you keep on throwing money into these systems that only 2% of the kids are reading at the right proficiency level, I mean, that's ridiculous. You have to give both the kids, the parents, the families, I mean, heck, the state of Georgia, a chance to su succeed. And you can't follow the same path that has proven nothing but failure. Correct. Correct. So Georgia, and I'm sure other states as well, we have a workforce development shortage. Mm -hmm. And so we're in the era of artificial intelligence, chat GPT. Jobs are going to be eliminated because of artificial intelligence. So the kids that are in the schools right now, if they can't read, if they can't perform simple math, the jobs that they would most likely have are going to be eliminated. Yeah. So if those jobs are eliminated, what do you do? Um, people will be desperate for money. If you're desperate for money, oftentimes that leads to crime. Yeah. Um, if it is increasing the crime, that usually doesn't just stay in one community. It proliferates. It eventually other gets out everywhere. Yeah. So education really is um, the cornerstone to me for American government. And if we're not getting that right, we have a issue. Yeah. Well, if, if those things, as I was having the discussions earlier, I sort of said what we're worried about right now is you're fighting against the the standards of the educational industrial complex. Yes. That's a good <laughs> that way they want to keep it all in place the same way before, as opposed to let's have a little creativity. Let's have a little bit of innovation. And especially when you're talking about the special needs students, not everybody learns the same way. And you've got to no. give those opportunities to both the kids and the parents. Absolutely. And I voted for the special needs bill that first year because I'm a physical therapist. So I've worked at Children's Hospital and that was still a bill that um, the Democrat Party also opposed. So Wow. Caring for kids. So controversial. Who knew it would be such a thing? I what did are we, not know myself. <laughs> so what are we looking to hopefully uh, address next? Because this session is over? The session is over, but we are still in the same term. So all bills that did not pass this past session, mm -hmm. um, we will pick them up January 2024. Automatically reintroduced? They don't have to be reintroduced. No. They're there. They just need to be passed. And what are you going to be focused on? What is your push going to be? You know, it has got to be the school choice bill. You know, I've made a dramatic change for um, the support of school choice, you know, to really show America and Georgia how important this is to the mm -hmm. point where, you know, there is a chance I may not win my seat, but it's just that important to me to say something must be done, something must be different. So school choice bill is number one on my list. Fantastic. Well, we thank you for coming out here to Alec. Hope you're having a, a good time picking up a few tips and hints and whatever the other legislators are doing in other states along the way. This is an Alec 50th annual meeting here in Orlando, Florida. Perfect. Let's see everybody just disappears.